a conversation this morning. We're going to get ready um, right now to have a conversation. So I wanted to bring everyone in. This morning, we're talking current events. All right. And I have several things that I wanted to go over. So I know that you probably had a quiet weekend the same as I. And if not, it was... um, I'm not sure what all you did. I made sure for probably the seventh year in a row to not celebrate what America calls Independence Day. There's still a lot that needs to be cleared up. There's still a lot that needs to be fixed. And that brings us into the current events topic of today. So we still have so many things going on that I find another fourth of july comes by and i find again that there is still too much going on that until we get those matters in order there's really just not anything to celebrate on the fourth of july for black americans now i understand that it's a tradition it was hard for a lot of people to let go of the tradition it's normally when everyone is off a lot of um what do you want to call it? The Essence Festival is usually during this week. Um, I think there was it was virtual this year. Um, family reunions take place, you know, uh, family vacations and all those other things. So I'm not judging you on that at all. But as far as an actual 4th of July celebration, well, there's still a lot that needs to be fixed in Black America. So we have a long way to go as having a need to participate in that, right? And so Black Lives Matter, current events, things that I saw happen this weekend. One of the silliest things that I saw happen was on the 4th of July, three individuals, uh, clearly Trump supporters, had woke up for the beginning of the day, and I think it took them the majority of the day to complete. But in a city where Black Lives Matter was painted in the street in yellow on a street these individuals purchased some black paint and spent their fourth of july painting the black lives matter that was painted in yellow painting it black so that it would not be as visible i think their intent was for it to be invisible but the black paint was not the same black as the street itself and so it just stands out even more personally i would have wanted black lives matter to be painted on sidewalks in black paint anyway so um the whole point of sidewalks all the time for me is painting it in the road is one thing but when you paint it on the sidewalk it just kind of um pays uh tribute in a sense to me to emmett till you know, the sidewalk situation, to Trayvon Martin, the sidewalk situation, to Tamir Rice, the sidewalk situation. There's a lot of sidewalk incidents that have happened that I think it would have, you know, jaywalking accusations, you know, from sidewalk to sidewalk in the middle of the street. Like, it, you know, so it, it, there were things that could have happened um, that I would have painted black on, on the sidewalks and, you know, um probably would have made just as much of a point but yeah for them to paint it black um that didn't really hurt my feelings um I think that they used a lot of energy that they could have used to go take off and celebrate the holiday that benefits white people more than it benefits black people so they could have taken off and gone and participated in that instead they used all this anger and energy which we're going to talk about that anger and energy when we talk about mask in a few, but they use all that anger and energy to paint Black Lives Matter, um, to paint the Black Lives Matter sign that was yellow to paint it black. So I found that very interesting, thought that we would definitely had to add that to the comments this morning. Now, as I am on um, social media, getting past the weekend, I literally woke up with my mind on Ricky Smiley and my thought was, you know, it didn't have anything to do with, um, with maybe what he ended up talking about, but my mind was just on, I I have no idea why, but my mind was on Ricky Smiley. And so I was thinking about him and I always like to go over and see him, you know, with his grandson and things like that. And I have the notification that pops up when he goes live. So 
I go on and it was really devastating to hear when he went live, he shared something and we're going to talk about, you know, the majority of that in a third topic that we have today, but he shared, he made a comment and he said that, you know, he saw some comments after he told everybody what happened and he kind of came down on his morning show, he came down on the black community in a sense to say we do have to hold our community accountable. And he brought up the eight-year-old being shot over the 4th of July weekend in Atlanta and another eight-year-old being shot in Alabama and um, just a host of shootings that took place. I think the total count for Atlanta for the 4th of July hangout or whatever they were doing was 24. So one died, an eight-year-old died, which is just traumatic on so many levels that it's more traumatic than hearing that 24 people got shot, you know. Um, But this is at all black events. And so he made comments about what we need to do and what we can do better in black America. And our black lives matter people so i have to stand with ricky smiley on those particular comments and just because we are black does not mean that we do not see what is going on now what i do not allow is a racist to deflect with the constant narrative of what about your black on black crime i don't need you to fix that what i need white americans to do is to fix the disrespect that's happening in white America when it comes to black Americans interacting with white America. So that's your mission over there. What comes and happens in our communities, that is for us to fix and that is for us to have a conversation about. So we don't dismiss our own people for having a conversation about what we need to do to address the major concerns happening in the black community. So I was disappointed to hear or see that people were uh, dismissing Ricky Smiley with some very valid comments. And here we are, you know, um, he made a comment about shopping malls. Now, okay, yes, the shopping, the shopping malls definitely do have issues when you have malls that they don't want black people coming to because there have been incidents of fights and innocent people being hurt. There's been incidents of shootings and innocent people being shot in, in or shot at, put in harm's way over an, an argument going on between black people. So yeah, that is a concern. That is something that we need to fix. There is behavior that you need to there's a way to, to carry yourself in a shopping mall because it's not just you and your crew hanging out. So you do need to look out for everybody else. And if you guys do decide to get into a gun battle that you feel is necessary, take it out of the shopping mall grounds, right? There are people that are there for just shopping. You're putting our own people in harm's way as well as other people in harm's way. Yeah, that will look bad on the black community. Something does have to be said about that. If you have events where everybody's gathering on this large strip and everybody's outside and everybody's gathering, if those events constantly have gun violence, then they're going to start putting restrictions on that. That impacts the people that just went out to have a good time. Your own people that just went out to have a good time. That impacts every one of us, not just a handful. Why? Because of what? Gun violence against your own people? When did you guys get to the point where you don't use your fist anymore, where you have to put everybody in harm's way because you can't handle either the fact that they may jump you because you were running your mouth or the fact that you may lose the fight. Maybe you're the one that you're protecting yourself or whatever you are. You started it, however it gets going and you end up losing the fight. So instead of just dealing with the situation and continuing to either take the loss or continuing to fight, you pull out a gun. And then it turns into a whole different atmosphere, whole different event. People running and screaming in those videos that I saw over the past weekend that happened in Atlanta. So, no, I stand with Ricky Smiley and the fact that we do need to talk about the issues that are happening. Because in order for our black lives to fully matter, we need to fully pay full attention to and demand respect for our black communities as a whole. 
And the only way that we're going to get full respect is we're, we're going to have to talk to the bad players. Yeah, every culture has criminals in their culture. But we have criminals in ours that we need to address. White people take care of your people. You take care of your criminals, right? You, you guys deal with that. Right now, we need to address the ones that are cutting up in our community, especially when they're cutting up at a time when 2020 finally has possible progress that may take place in America. Never have we been this close in Black America. Historically, you can go look back at everything that we've done and never have we been this close to possible progress. So don't hold us back, bad players, by doing things that are disrespectful to the culture. Behaving in a disrespectful way, whether it's criminal activity, whether it's um, bullying, um, online bullying, you know, talking about each other, putting each other down, gossiping about each other, destroying families, all that destructiveness that's going on, black men cheating on black women, all that. All of those things are things that need to be discussed. It's not comfortable, but it needs to be discussed. Our Black Lives Matter, and who better can make that argument to white America than us when we unite as one? So in order to have this conversation, we do we can't just dismiss when someone... Yeah, first of all, you'll see me dismiss... When a racist comes, well, what about black on black crime in Chicago, Diva? Yeah, I'll check them. I'll check them. Don't worry about black on black crime when you need to figure out why Dylan Roof was such, such an asshole, you know. So I'll check them, you know, definitely. So I'm never telling you, you know, you guys not to check them, you know. But when we, when Ricky Smiley stood up this morning and he had a conversation with things that we need to fix in the black community. Don't you dare come down on him, council culture. Who do you think you are? It's our responsibility using our platforms to have these conversations so that these conversations can continue and so that progress can take place within our own people. It's always our voices that matter on this. So it's always our responsibility to have the conversation with our own people. So I'm disappointed to see people come down on Ricky Smiley because I stand with him. And then if you had paid attention to the entire dialogue, his daughter was a gun shooting victim. She was shot. So she has been impacted. His family has been impacted by gun violence. She is going to recover. And that is the great news compared to the families that lost the eight-year-olds over the same weekend. She's going to recover, but she's still a victim of gun violence. She was in surgery. He's having to rush to her side in Houston. Um, she was shot at a Whataburger in Houston. So, he, yeah, he, he definitely came from a place of, you know, especially when someone's going through, their family is going through the news of what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. He's full of passion, and he, and he, and he had the right to say what needed to be said. We are just terrified of saying these things, but these things need to be said, right? And can, okay, and so another thing, um, let me um, get this up right here. So the next thing that we're gonna have a conversation about are the masks, you guys. So let's bring the people over now that we had our own private conversation.